Whether you like horror movies or not, it's pretty undeniable that they're absolutely huge with a fanbase as wide and passionate as any genre of film. From classics to 1980s gore to bone-chilling modern takes on humanity, we are drawn to the scares that these movies can provide. Some of the best parts, though, never make it to the big screen and instead wind up on the cutting room floor. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button to join our notification squad and stay up to date with the latest from Screen Rant. The Fly stars Jeff Goldblum as a man who accidentally crosses his own DNA with that of a fly and proceeds to turn into a disgusting fly-human hybrid over the course of the movie. One deleted scene showed him desperately trying to understand his situation by putting both a baboon and a cat into his teleportation machine. Unsurprisingly, the creature attacks him and he's forced to bludgeon it to death with a pipe. Test audiences hated the animal cruelty so much, David Cronenberg cut the scene from the final edit. If you're a fan of the horror genre, you're probably a fan of Wes Craven. Best known for A Nightmare on Elm Street, Craven also gave us genre classics like The Hills Have Eyes and The Last House on the Left. The latter movie being so psychologically demanding that while it was in theaters, projectionists took it upon themselves to edit the film before screening them and cut out scenes that they deemed too disturbing for audiences. Wes has never revealed what those scenes are but ended up keeping the cuts for the final theatrical version. When Hostel first came out in 2005, it was almost unanimously agreed upon that the movie was gory to the point of being gratuitous. While it has some good writing and directorial ideas, the whole movie pretty much boils down to exploitation for entertainment. Despite its final cut being undeniably brutal, an alternate ending took a bit more of a psychologically disturbing turn, with the protagonist Paxton kidnapping the businessman's daughter in order to use her to get revenge for the deaths of his friends, stripping the movie of any last shred of humanity. Our second Eli Roth entry on this list is actually his first and much better movie, Cabin Fever. Where Hostel is grimy and relentless, Cabin Fever is actually funny and a fresh, if disgusting, take on the sexy teens at a cabin and the hillbillies that hate them horror movie trope. An alternate ending involving some local police would have taken this movie to the next level. It sees them murder two of the last survivors and set them and the cabin on fire, proving that they've been complicit in the horror the entire time. Paranormal Activity came along in 2007 and thrilled the horror community similar to other low-budget found footage films like The Blair Witch did years earlier. The home security camera style was innovative, exciting, and terrifying. Most don't know that there were actually a few alternate endings made before the director decided on the one that was used. The scariest of these endings sees Katie become possessed by the spirit that haunts her and finally taking a knife to her own throat. While disturbing, the ending they chose is perfect for one last jump. <laughs> While Jaws may not seem like a horror movie anymore when included with the extreme violence and gore that we're used to in this day and age, it definitely is. One of the most spine-chilling scenes is the one where young Alex Kintner is first attacked by the shark. And believe it or not, this scene was originally going to be even more graphic. They had intended to actually see the shark come out of the water to devour the boy, but it's probably better left to the imagination. Stigmata came out in 1999 and starred Patricia Arquette as a hairdresser from Pittsburgh who also happened to be an atheist who develops out of nowhere the wounds that Christ had during crucifixion. While this movie is hell-bent on inflicting any and all bodily harm to its protagonist, there was one extremely gruesome scene left out of the final product, in which she slices up her own arm with a knife before stabbing it into her own hand as the priest watches from the sidelines. The Thing is one of those classic 1980s horror movies that is just so over-the-top gross that it was destined to become a cult classic, while making its audiences feel the need to take a long, hot shower afterward. The movie centers around researchers attempting to understand an alien species, and an alternate death of the character Nalls was storyboarded but apparently proved just too expensive to realistically shoot. It involved him getting sucked into the creature while tentacles burst out of him, which in the 80s would have been some impressive CGI. 
We can't talk about alien horror movies without talking about Alien, the iconic Ridley Scott outer space extravaganza. Almost every scene of this movie is iconic in the horror community, and if it hadn't been cut, this one might have been no different. In the movie, the death of Dallas is presumed after he's attacked by the alien. The deleted scene showed what happened in a little more detail, with Ripley finding his body cocooned by the monster. In order to end his suffering, she takes a flamethrower to him and the creature. A movie titled Cannibal Holocaust is pretty much exactly what you think it is. A quiet indie drama about a family in the 1960s just trying to get by. Wait, no, it's about cannibals. One deleted scene intended to show a man being eaten alive by piranhas. So a dummy was made and meat was strapped to it, but when they lowered it into the tank of real piranhas, they didn't react as expected, and in fact barely reacted at all. The scene was so unscary it was scrapped entirely. The Butterfly Effect was a strange and confusing movie starring Ashton Kutcher as a young man with a mysterious ability to rewind time. His character quickly learns that all of his actions in the past have extreme consequences in the present as everything goes awry. One bizarre deleted scene actually shows him deciding to travel back into his mother's womb in order to strangle himself with his own umbilical cord, ensuring he is never born. And it's no big wonder why they didn't include it in the final cut. Where am I going? We won't need eyes to see. It's difficult to imagine much was cut from Event Horizon. Paul W.S. Anderson's visually assaulting movie about a team of astronauts sent out to investigate the reappearance of a ship that had disappeared years before. And yet, according to the visual effects supervisor, even a film this disturbing could have been worse. What is there to say about a Serbian film other than run away? This is widely regarded as one of the most, if not the most, extreme exploitation films ever made, and the things that happen in it are nearly unspeakable. It has been banned in 46 countries, ran for three days in Spain, and sparked debates about censorship all over the world. To think that anything was cut from this movie to make it more palatable is almost funny, but over four minutes were demanded by censors before they would allow it to be screened. Scream 4 failed to capture the allure of the first film and its slightly lesser sequels, but it definitely tried, with a very self-referential opening featuring a handful of cameos by stars like Anna Paquin. Unfortunately, some believe this opening actually hurt the movie, and the original opening they had planned might have fared better. They shot a more classic two friends watching scary movies before getting taken out by Ghostface opening, which is nothing new, but might have provided a nostalgia that could have helped send the movie off in the right direction. We've already mentioned The Thing earlier on this list, but it's such a sci-fi horror classic that it deserves a second go-around. The film has a pretty ambiguous ending, with the audience left to assume that the alien, McCready, and Childs are all burnt to a crisp in one fell triumphant swoop. But actually, another ending was shot that didn't tie things up in such a neat package. It showed an infected dog running from the burning building and into the world, but the filmmakers chose the more satisfying, if less open-ended, conclusion. A Nightmare on Elm Street is a classic, and if you don't know the story of Freddy Krueger, he was burned alive by the town for his crimes against their children, made a pact with a demon, and returned to haunt their dreams. But there was actually more to it. There was a scene where we find out that the children he originally killed were the brothers and sisters of the ones he would go after in the future. While it was cut, leaving in that context would have really upped the tragedy. Most fans of the Friday series regard the fourth installment as one of the best in the franchise, and it definitely boasts the best deleted scene of the bunch. An alternate ending was shot that showed the inside of the log cabin where the final showdown took place, but the morning after. It showed Trish in a dream sequence going upstairs to discover her mother's body floating in a bathtub, and a good jump scare of Jason jumping out of nowhere and murdering her before she wakes up and realizes it was all a dream. 1408 is an adaptation of a Stephen King novel about a man who writes books about haunted houses, but is skeptical of them himself. As research, he rents out a supposedly haunted room in a hotel where dozens of people have died in the last hundred years. His skepticism is put to the test, as the room turns out to be the real deal. A deleted scene shows his ex-wife summoned to the hotel, and he tries desperately to stop her from entering the room, but it tilts and he is powerless against it. The Cure for Wellness is an almost psychedelic experience, and one that aims to get deep under your skin with its type of horror. In a deleted scene that takes place in the not-so-well wellness center, 
we see the protagonist become forcibly submerged in a tank of water that has been oxygenated and forced to breathe in. As he drowns without drowning, he hallucinates wildly images of rituals, cow fetuses, ballerinas that melt, eels, and more. It's an almost beautiful scene, but is also terribly uncomfortable to sit through. No other horror movie of late has had quite the same impact as Hereditary. With bone-chilling horror, unmatched performances from Tony Collette and Alex Wolfe, and inspired direction by Ari Aster, Hereditary continues to shock and amaze. But according to Aster, there's even more. The director said that over an hour was cut from the movie and that the Blu-ray will include nine grisly deleted scenes. What the scenes are remain a mystery, but it's impossible to imagine that they would be any less amazing and traumatizing than what made it into the final cut. <laughs> well, what do you think? Will you sleep tonight after this list of terrifying deleted scenes? What are your favorite horror movies? Or are you the type to shy away from the fright? Let us know in the comments, and click subscribe to stay up to date with Screen Rant. Thanks for watching.